Well, these were, of course, uh, joyous celebrations. And now to sort of uh, take a closer look at how Polish constitution evolved and what are some of its uh, key principles, we are being joined by Jakub Kocjan, rule of law campaigner and board member. Hello, sir. Delighted to have you with us. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. Welcome to TVP World. So my first question is going to be a fairly general one. And looking at the constitution of today, uh, to what extent do you think it has been informed by the original document from 1791? Given that the continuity of these documents has been interrupted through various dramatic events of history, basically. Yes, there was a lot of dramatic uh, events regarding Polish constitution. It was not only uh, just after passing this constitution of 3rd May, but also we had a lot of different constitutions uh, between the wars and uh, after the war. But uh, taking into account all these changes, social changes, uh, political changes through uh, all these uh, decades, uh, is still the um, the constitution of 3rd May played important role in Polish history and also for Polish law for now because uh, it was of course uh, one of the first constitutions uh, in the in the world the second after American one and it uh, uh, entailed a lot of um, liberties for uh, regarding religious liberty uh, regarding uh, more liberty for uh, also classes which were uh, not uh, so rich. So it was uh, really important also for Polish constitutional tradition, even if in practice uh, it uh, was uh, legally viable only for a few months. Right, so and I sort of uh, wanted to talk about uh, the modern day, right, because I mean, and it, it doesn't apply only to Polish constitution, but what I notice is that the rights of citizens continue, sort of tend to ebb and flow, right? So how is it possible that you're, you know, making progress and then taking a step back? Uh, what were some of the reasons for Poland uh, to go for such a process? Um, yes, Polish constitution has not been changed so many times, also because uh, it is quite difficult, according to Polish constitution, to, to change, to amend it. Uh, but uh, I believe that Polish current constitution um, is quite good. It also um, has uh, a very a broad reach catalog of uh, rights and liberties for every citizen. So I believe that even uh, if uh, we are constantly talking about uh, uh, changes, even regarding the uh, new branches of law or um, which is an effect of technological progress, uh, we still uh, can find a lot of uh, support and our rights in constitution and this amazing thing. Also last uh, uh, eight years showed how important was Polish uh, constitution for Polish society. It was really amazing and quite surprising how uh, many people were uh, talking about constitution, were referring to constitution uh, both on protest but also in uh, their uh, practice and this is what is the most important thing yes uh, the uh, daily life and uh, the possibility to refer to constitution directly in every case and now speaking of the current constitution uh, what do you think is necessary to make it remain relevant for a long time we do not have the benefit of a common law tradition so we can have for example a judiciary taking part in allowing this document to evolve it is all statutory right and change of a constitution isn't that easy you really need consensus what reforms do you think are necessary at this stage, if any, in order to allow this constitution to remain the sort of backbone of the legal system, um, one that will allow uh, the entirety of the legal system to function properly for perhaps decades to come. 
Yes, definitely uh, it is really difficult to change Polish constitution, but it's not only about Polish constitution. Yeah, In the United States also this process is uh, more and more difficult. And the reason is also that with growing political polarization, uh, it is really difficult to um, achieve such a, a broad consensus. So I believe that in practice we have to accept that, that uh, the possibility of uh, changing the constitution is uh, really low but what is the most important uh, thing we uh, are able to do it when uh, it is necessary according to european law yeah because of course you are right uh, saying that uh, in poland we have a statutory law but uh, still we have a bit of case law because of uh, being in European Union and European uh, Court uh, of uh, Justice. So uh, in these situations, and we had two situations when uh, we changed our current constitution. The first was uh, connected to European law uh, regarding the process of uh, extradition of Polish citizen to another European country. And uh, it is clear that that sometimes the constitution needs to to change uh, but uh, generally i believe that our constitution is really complex and the last eight years showed that uh, even in extremely difficult situations with uh, constitutional tribunal in the country uh, having been switched off a polish constitution still is important tool and uh, in uh, cooperation with uh, European treaties, European Court of Justice, but also European Court of Human Rights, uh, it was able to protect the uh, citizens' rights. Of course, there is a lot of uh, uh, things which are still the subject of discussion. For example, thinking about uh, same-sex marriages, uh, which is uh, the uh, demand of many groups and uh, the ac social acceptance is growing. Also, we are supporting that uh, demand. Uh, it is not... Uh, not clear, uh, maybe for now, whether Polish constitution allows for that, because of course it defines uh, marriage uh, as a relationship between men and women, but it is only as a protected uh, class of marriage. So I still believe that uh, with, within this constitution, we can achieve uh, social progress and uh, uh, some, uh, some social changes, which are the result of, uh, of uh, change in the society. But uh, when it really uh, is needed to change constitution, like to adjust to European law, or for example, to make it more difficult for some people, uh, it was ab uh, about criminals, yeah, it was the second uh, change uh, of uh, Polish current constitution, uh, to limit this possibility to uh, be chosen if you have been convicted for uh, important, uh, grave um, uh, offense crime with uh, criminal accusations. Uh, so uh, I strongly believe that for next year's Polish constitution uh, will not be changed, but uh, within this constitution, we still can uh, protect citizen, uh, citizens' uh, rights. Maybe in some parts, this constitution uh, is becoming uh, a bit uh, anachronic. Uh, yeah, but the most important part of constitution is the catalog of uh, citizen liberties, of uh, liberties and rights for every person. And I believe uh, it's uh, the most important uh, part and the most important fact about our uh, current constitution is that this catalog is very, very broad and that the limitations of personal liberties uh, are not uh, in reality, um, it's not very easy to, to change it, to restrict it. So it's the most important thing. But of course, probably there will be a lot of
proposals to change the constitution, especially now when we are a bit in constitutional trap. So after uh, eight years of uh, rule of law crisis, uh, we have to find solutions for that, which is very difficult. And some political parties and also some organizations suggest changing constitution to um, with broader social consensus to uh, to uh, find solution for this crisis of rule of law. But I don't think that in reality it is uh, easy to do it. And mm. it can be not possible for also a few more years. So I believe that uh, for now... Think, the, because the government recently said possible. the government is proposing changes related, for example, to the Constitution Tribunal. They want to uh, create a more foolproof system whereby it would be more difficult to influence the composition of the tribunal. So do you think that uh, the current government will be able to uh, gather the sufficient consensus within parliament, uh, given all the forces present there, in order to um, rebuild this tribunal? Because following, like you've mentioned all these years, uh, regardless whether one actually was um, the, a follower of the previous government or not, it is clear that there is some chaos there, and legal chaos is never a good thing. So there needs to be some sort of like a reboot of the entire system to make it uh, easy for the average person to take a look at that and you know, not think like, okay, so uh, are these rulings going to be binding or not? Will there be uh, any sort of disputes w w in re with regards to that? So. Do you think this is actually one reform that is likely to be passed um, during this term of Poland's parliament? And of course, you as a rule of law expert, perhaps you know what steps need to be taken, right? So In let's take a look at that, it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the legal chaos is the uh, worst result of uh, the crisis of rule of law uh, f over last uh, years. And of course, this legal chaos is extremely dangerous for the rights and liberties of every citizen. It is uh, not only about constitutional tribunal, yeah, it is uh, especially about the neo judges in common courts and uh, new National Council of Judiciary, which is produced these neo-judges uh, whose uh, status is not clear as they are uh, appointed uh, with uh, political influence. Uh, but I still believe that thinking uh, in a realistic way, it would be extremely difficult to find the uh, solution and find the majority to change the constitution because in Poland it demands two of three votes in parliament, so nearly 70% uh, to pass. It has uh, to be passed both by uh, same and Senate, both chambers of uh, parliament. Uh, and uh, in some cases, it would not be that case, but uh, to change, uh, to create changes, especially in this part of constitution regarding uh, liberties of citizen, it uh, demands also the referendum. Uh, in the whole society. So it is quite complicated procedure. Uh, I believe that uh, we, um, yeah, as we have uh, in parliament, uh, the uh, majority uh, of pro-democratic parties, but it is not enough to change the constitution. And uh, party law and justice and President Andrzej Duda were participating in rule of law crisis actively. They are responsible for that. So I don't think that uh, they would uh, accept any uh, anything uh, trying to, uh, to um, uh, resolve the problem which uh, they had uh, generated before, yes? Uh, uh, do so, you think, uh, when looking at mm -hmm. this situation, because this is also interesting, like from the point of view of an average citizen, many people had their reservations about the judiciary, they were saying like the courts are working too slowly, so initially they thought maybe a reform would be a good thing. But after all these years, apart from the crisis that you've mentioned, do you think that there was anything achieved with regards to the way the courts functioned? Or was it simply focused on judicial appointments, which in itself proved to be highly problematic later on? 
Yeah, definitely the only result of this eight years of, uh, let's say, reforming uh, judiciary system is that the uh, proceedings uh, take even uh, longer, yeah? The, it is uh, more than 30% of prolonging of the delays in uh, judiciary system. So definitely uh, there was no uh, improvement at all. It was totally the opposite in last uh, years. Definitely, we need some reforms. We need uh, modernization. We need uh, digitalization of uh, working in courts. Uh, but uh, as for now, we have to be patient. And uh, if uh, there is a, a change for uh, the president from pro-democratic majority, uh, it but it is uh, more than one year yeah, for, uh, for this change, uh, it is a possibility to change uh, uh, and pass the bills, but it will be passing particular bills regarding constitutional tribunal or uh, judiciary system. The change of constitution is really difficult to imagine with law and justice and President Duda. Jakub Kosian, thank you, sir, for being with us this afternoon and for explaining all of these intricacies and sort of uh, aspects of the constitution. Thank you. Thank you very much for invitation. Thank you very much.